Welcome to World History. Today we're going to discuss the unbelievably depressing phenomena of American slavery and the triangle trade. So this is going to be really rough and let's dive into it. So the things that you should be able to do at the end of this lesson is explain the philosophy of mercantilism, analyze the causes and the rise of plantation agriculture in the Caribbean, and then evaluate the effects of the slave trade on Africa and the Americas. So with that, let's dive in and talk about the reasons for the rise of American slavery. American slavery arose amongst the desire to expand trade and specifically to grow cash crops. This development of the triangle trade, which is trade between North America, Europe, Africa, and South America, is so called because it kind of partially resembles a triangle, as you can sort of see here. Different commodities went in different uh, directions of this trade route, but generally on this side you have raw materials. On this side you have finished products. So for example, sugar, came, sugar would be moving this direction and tools would be moving this direction. And then Africa, tools would be sent to Africa in exchange for trading for slaves and then exporting them to, to the Caribbean. This system uh, propped up the economy of all these different areas. It made Europe incredibly rich. It made some African groups rich, but it also absolutely devastated and destroyed others. It created large plantations, which created a lot of opportunity for wealthy people in the Americas, but it also created a permanent underclass of people and a series of sort of racially based hierarchies that are incredibly problematic even to this day. So very complicated. We'll spend some time in class breaking this down as well. But no, this is the triangle trade. All of this was designed to, better, to fit into an economic system known as mercantilism. Mercantilism is designed to increase the wealth of your country through the creation and the acquisition of colonies. If you have colonies, you can then increase your amount of gold and silver by selling two colonies valuable finished products, clothing, tools, weapons, stuff like that, and then importing from colonies all of this stuff, gold, sim silver, fur, lumber, foodstuffs, things like that. In order to attempt to keep this system going, they would place restrictions on trade, trying to demand that the colonies only trade with the mother country to make sure that the mother country is the one who benefits from this system. And so, as we said, you have your mother country sending manufactured goods to the colonies and the colonies sending raw materials back to the mother country. And thus, a country like Spain or England could become incredibly wealthy and the colonies would benefit to some degree. And there's a lot of forced labor and unpleasantness in the process. So let's talk about how slavery fits into this whole process. It's important to note that slavery as an institution has been part of many societies going all the way back to ancient, uh, to the basic, basically the birth of human civilization. But the slavery that emerged in the Atlantic world in the 16 to 18, 1900s is a different type of phenomenon. It should note that this happened during this time period because you start to have the Portuguese and later the English setting up trading posts like we see here all along what became known as the slave coast. They would then buy slaves from groups in Africa usually, and then take these slaves and transport them to the Americas where they would be put to work in a variety of different really unpleasant tasks. Generally sugar, sugar plantations, uh, coffee plantations, and sometimes silver mining, which is just the absolute worst. What's different about this slave trade from other forms of slavery is this slave trade was entirely race-based in that it was white people enslaving non-white people. And this was also a type of slavery called chattel slavery, which meant that slaves had fewer any rights and were often categorized as animals. <laughs> 
which meant that they could, of course, be bought and sold without any sort of pay, without paying any attention to their family connections or anything that they might want. And so we're going to look in class and talk a little bit about how this is different from other forms of slavery and how this specifically created a much a really unpleasant sort of racial caste system in the Americas that we're still struggling with. So this is the growth of slavery in the Atlantic world. Now let's talk about what happens on the journey across the Atlantic. The journey across the Atlantic was called the Middle Passage, and it was one of the most brutal and traumatizing parts of this new Atlantic slavery. Slaves were packed into slave ships in such tight quarters that a significant portion of them did not survive the journey, and the ones that did were traumatized for life. Slaves would be, slave corpses would be thrown overboard and, and the suffering endured by the people who were forced into these slave ships was unbelievably high. The slave, the slave traders were willing to take these losses because slaves were so valuable that it was acceptable for them to assume that a significant portion of the slaves that they were shipping across would die in exchange for trying to pack slaves in as tightly as possible which again gets to the dehumanization of this type of chattel slavery, where the slave owners and the slave traders clearly did not view their slaves as people, which is really, really problematic. All of this fed into a system of plantation agriculture that was incredibly unpleasant. I mentioned earlier that some slaves were put to work in silver mines, which was really bad, but the vast majority of slaves went to work on plantations, specifically sugar plantations. And so sugar plantations are especially brutal because one, the sugar cane is incredibly sharp which, and has to be cut by hand. And so as you're harvesting it, you get cuts sort of all over your body, which sweat then gets into. Once the sugar is then cut, it needs to be processed, which is an unbelievably unpleasant process where the sugar must be kept boiling for more than 24 hours around the clock. And you're, these pots are then stirred by hand and so the sugar then splashes up and burns people. And so a lot of people suffer debilitating injuries, both in the harvesting and the processing of this sugar. All of this together meant that the life expectancy of a slave on one of these sugar plantations was rarely more than a year. And so this created an incredible demand for more slaves in order to replace the slaves who they knew were gonna inevitably die in the process of both harvesting and processing sugar. Obviously, the lives of these enslaved peoples was inc were incredibly unpleasant, and we're gonna really look at the effect of that in some future lessons. But the effect on the world in general was a greater supply of sugar, which people quickly became accustomed to, which then created more demand for plantation agriculture and a willingness to sort of overlook the horrible human cost of this delicious sweetness. So all of this brings us back to our objectives. Hopefully you can provide some details explaining the philosophy of mercantilism and explain the causes of the rise of plantation agriculture in the Caribbean and talk about the effects of the slave trade on various areas. So when we come back, we'll discuss these things in class and do some readings in order to put context and provide some detail among, for, for the people who lived through this horrific system.